Today's gonna be 83-2. We're gonna take a look at other algebraic functions again, but this time we're gonna focus on finding the domain of these other algebraic functions. And so we're gonna find the domain of these and um, we're also gonna spend some time graphing and we're gonna take a look at the sign charts of these. Now, if you remember this definition we went over in our previous lesson, the two things that I wanted you to get from this is this first part. It says if n is odd, the principal nth root is denoted the nth root of x is a unique real number satisfying that statement. Now what that means is that if you have an odd root, there's no restriction to your domain. Now if n is even, that means that this is only true defined provided that your x is positive. So if you ever have an even root, there are restrictions to your domain, and that restriction is the values inside the root have to be greater than or equal to zero. So our first one here says, for the following functions, state their domains and create a sign chart diagram. So my domain, we have to ask ourselves a question, am I dividing by x? No. Do I have any roots? Yes. Well, this right here though, that is an odd root. In this previous slide here, we said that if you have an odd root, there is no restriction to your domain, okay? Well, that means that I can't count that as a restriction to my domain. So in this instance, there are no restrictions to my domain, so my domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now I need to go through and create that sign chart. So we have to set our equation equal to zero. Now the reason why we do that, remember, visually or graphically, remember this is my y, this is my f of x. We're trying to say if that equals zero here, right? that's where my y is zero, we want to know where is my y positive and where is my y negative. And so finding the values in which it crosses where my y is zero or crosses the x-axis allows me to find the regions in which it's positive and negative. So if I set this equal to zero, then I get zero equals three x times the cube root of two minus x. Now, according to the zero product principle, I can take, take each of these factors and I can set them equal to zero. So I can say three x equals zero and I get cube root of two minus x equals zero. Now solving for these, I get x equals zero because I can divide both sides by three. For this one, I have to cube both sides and so the cube root and the cube cancel out, so I get two minus x equals zero. I can add x to both sides, and so I get two equals x. So now taking those values and putting them on a number line. Here's zero, here's two. Now picking values in between on the interval, like negative one, one, and three. Now plugging them in, if I plug in negative one into my function here, that gives me three times negative one, times the cube root of two minus negative one. So I wanna see if it's positive or negative. Well, this right here is negative. This right here is positive. So it's gonna give me a negative. Then if I plug in one, well, this is going to be a positive. This is going to be a positive. So this is gonna be positive. If I plug in a positive three, Well, this is gonna be a positive and this is gonna be a negative, so this is gonna be a negative. Now, we're not shading anything here, okay? Like we're just constructing the sign chart. That's the sign chart. This shows me where my values are gonna be above the x-axis and below the x-axis, and you could even punch this into a calculator and validate that. And so here's a, a picture of that graph. We said from negative infinity all the way to zero, it's gonna be below the x-axis. Well from negative infinity all the way to zero, this is below the x-axis. Between zero and two, it's positive. Well, between zero and two, it's positive. And then from two on, from two on, it's gonna be negative. Now, if you look at that function there, that's it's kind of like a goofy looking function. And the only actual way for us to get a super accurate answer and how that's gonna look is by modeling it with a graph and calculator or Desmos. Next example here. So it says for the following functions, state their domains and create a sign chart diagram. Okay, so same thing. 
Now the first for our domain, domain restrictions, the first. Am I dividing by x? In this case, no, I'm not dividing by any x, right? There's no undefined values that way. Second, is it possible for me to have a negative inside of a square root? The answer is yes. Well, I have two square roots. I have a square root here, and I have a square root here. So I have to account for both of those instances. And so in terms of my domain, my first one, it can't be negative. So I have to say that 2 minus the fourth root of x plus 3, that has to be greater than or equal to 0. The second instance, I have to say this fourth root of x plus 3, that has to be greater than or equal to 0. Because they're both even roots, and I can't have a negative inside there. So I need to solve for both. So this first one right here, this one's kind of easy. You know, let's take the fourth root of both sides. I get x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, minus 3 on both sides. x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So that's my first. My next one, minus 2 on both sides. I get negative fourth root of x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Divide both sides by negative. And I'm going to get the fourth root of x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 2. Now, haha, I hope you guys caught it too. Remember, when you divide by a negative, you have to flip the sign. I know there's some of you that didn't catch it, keeping you accountable. All right, so now I need to take the fourth root to both sides. And so I'm going to get x plus 3 is less than or equal to 16, minus 3 on both sides, and you get x is less than or equal to 13. Now the domain is where these intersect. So having said that, we draw our number line. My first one at negative 3, it's equal to, so it's solid circle. That goes on forever. My second one, we said it was 13. And so it's less than that. The domain is the intersection of the two. So they intersect here. And so my domain is actually only going to be from negative 3 all the way to positive 13. So now I need to go through and I need to create that sign chart diagram. So I need to know what my zeros are. So if I set this equal to 0, I'm going to get 0 equals the square root of 2 minus the fourth root of x plus 3. Well, to get rid of the square root, I have to square both sides. So I get 0 equals 2 minus the fourth root of x plus 3. So I need a minus 2 on both sides. Divide both sides by a negative. So I get 2 equals the fourth root of x plus 3. And I need to fourth root both sides. And so I'm going to get 16 equals x plus 13. And so minus 3 both sides, I get x equals 13. OK, so now that I have this x equals 13, here, here's the issue, is looking at where this goes on our number line. I only have 13. I, where, how do I interpret what's going on here? Well, we kind of have to think along the lines of what's going on with our domain as well. right? If we look at our domain, it also says that it stops at negative 3. And so I'm also going to have negative 3 here. I know this is nothing. I know this is nothing. And there's no other indication where my graph is going to be in between that. And so there's only one value for me to test, and that's between some value in between here like let's say like positive 10. And so if you go through and you plug in a positive 10, well, this is going to give you the fourth root of say 13. The fourth root of 13 is smaller than two. And so two minus that small number, that's a positive. The square root of that positive number is positive. And so this is going to be positive. Uh, another way of even thinking about it, like technically you don't even have to test anything is because it's impossible for this to go negative, right? I have a square root of everything. 
it's impossible for it to go negative unless there's a negative in front of it. And so having said that, this entire region has to be positive there. And so taking a look at what that looks like on a graph, if you notice from negative three, there's nothing over here, there's nothing over here from negative three all the way to that 13, it's positive and above the graph. Next one here, let's state the domain and create a signed chart. So in this instance, for my domain, we have to go through this checklist, we have to think to ourselves, am I dividing by x? The answer is yes, here. So I have to say x plus one cannot equal zero, subtract one on both sides, x cannot equal negative one. Boom, got that. Now, the next is any roots. Well, I do have a square root, but we just said that it's the cube root of three. And we said that if you have an odd root, you don't have to worry about domain restrictions. So that's my only domain restriction there. And so my domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative one, union from negative one to positive infinity. So I have that. Now I need to create a sign chart. So I set this equal to zero. And so zero is gonna equal the cube root of eight x over x plus one. Well, I can cube both sides, cube it. And so I get zero equals eight x over x plus one. Well, now this is a rational equation. Well, we have to get rid of the denominators. So those cancel out. So I get zero equals eight x. That means x equals zero. So I can put that on my number line. We have x equals zero. Now I also have to put my undefined value there, which is negative one. And so now testing these, if I plug in, let's say like a negative two, I'll change the color on that so you can tell, negative two. So if I plugged in negative two, that's gonna give me the cube root of eight times negative two over negative two plus one. And so this is a negative over a negative, which is a positive. A cube root of a positive is positive. Then if I plug in a value here, like negative 0.5, if I plug in negative 0.5, that's gonna give me the cube root of eight times negative 0.5 over negative 0.5 plus one. And so this is a negative over a positive, so that's a negative, the cube root of a negative is a negative. And then if I plug in a value greater than zero, like one, I get the cube root of eight times one over one plus one, so that's going to be positive. And so let's verify that, taking a look at this. Now here's that vertical asymptote that we just found, right? Everything was positive there, then between zero and or negative one and zero here, that was negative. And then right there, that's when it started going positive again. Now that's so goofy, right? We never took a look at rational functions and they did those types of things, it's kind of cool. But it's because we have these like odd roots that are going on or roots that are bigger than two, a lot of goofy things start happening with our graphs, which is why we have to graph it. I mean, like trying to create a model by just plugging in X values, not only is that miserable, I mean, that's why we have our graphing utilities so that we can get a better visual of these models. Last one. So for this function, state the domain and create a sign chart diagram. So for this one, am I dividing by x? Yes, that's in the denominator. So I know that that cannot equal zero. It's also in a square root. So that means it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Well, how do we, say that those two things are going to be the same, what we're going to do then is we're gonna combine them together and just say it's only greater than zero. So we're gonna say that x squared minus one has to be greater than zero. So I'm gonna add one to both sides. x squared is greater than one, so x is gonna be plus or minus one. Um, we have to put that on a sign chart. Right, it's, since this is a polynomial inequality, you have to create the sign chart for the domain. So if I test a negative two, well, if I plug in negative two, negative two squared minus one, that's gonna be positive. Then if I plug in zero, zero minus one, that's negative. 
and then if I plug in positive 2 again that's going to give me a positive and because it's greater than 0 we have to have the positive regions so it's going to be those regions there so my domain is going to be from negative infinity to negative 1 no bracket union from 1 to positive infinity because we said that it cannot equal those values right these are open circles there's my domain so now creating the sign chart so we have to take this and set it equal to 0 and if I do that, we have 0 equals 2x over the square root of x squared minus 1. Multiply both sides by the square root of x squared minus 1. And so I get 0 equals 2x, so x equals 0. So now creating that sign chart, we have 0 on there. And we also have to have our undefined values, so negative 1 and positive 1. So now, going through and testing this out, well, we know that due to the fact that we have this domain issue, this is a big fat x. Like, this is nothing. I can't pick any value between negative 1 and 1 because of the fact that we just said that it can't be in our domain here. So even though that I found zero, right? If I were to take that zero and plug it back in, I get a negative and a square root. <gasps> no, can't have that. So we can't even include that. So it's kind of like a shortcut if you realize that. But testing some of these other values, what if I test negative two? So that's gonna give me two times negative two over the square root of negative two squared minus one. So this is a negative over a positive which is going to give me a negative. And if I were to do the positive 2, that's going to give me a positive over a positive, and so that's going to be positive. So there's my sign chart. Now let's take a look at that visually. That's I don't even know what to call it, but it's like an uber asymptote, right? I mean, it's just like this giant space in our graphs in which our graph cannot exist at all. It's kind of interesting. It's really interesting. So, But like I said, being able to punch that in our calculator to be able to visualize it, that's going to help us. All right, so in conclusion, what concepts were discussed today? We'll, we examined the domain and how to find the domain of these more complicated functions. There wasn't anything different that we did. We just continued to apply our rules and definitions in a different fashion. Uh, so a few questions that you guys can post in the comments. Uh, why would it be important to convert into an exponential notation? So in any of those problems, could have been easier for me to solve that if I converted it into that exponential for, uh, notation. I only saw a few of you guys comment on this. Can you please tell me and reiterate how do I find the composition of functions again? Those that already posted that, you don't have to do it again, but those that didn't post it, can you please tell me what the composition of functions again? Cool, as usual, if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.